holidays away from your home and your loved ones. Well, that would have been the fate of four persons this year, but Food for the Poor made a huge difference in their lives and that of their families. Kivette Silvera, Director of Food for the Poor, is with us in studio. And online we have Sandra Ramsey, Prison Ministry Administrator of Food for the Poor. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let me start with uh, uh, Ms. Silvera. Um, how long have you guys been doing this? We've been doing this for over 10 years. So you pay fines for people who are in jail only because they can't afford the fines? Only because they can't afford so the fines. So had they not, um, or were they able to afford the fines, then they would... They would have just paid the fine and released themselves. Okay. Because these are minor offenders. Do you know how many? Um, data said four this year, but do you know how many have impacted over... Well, Sandra Ramsey would be best better to well, answer that question. <laughs> Ms. Ramsey, about how many we've impacted over these years? Well, we have done 719, but we did another one yesterday, so actually it's five in all. Oh, oh and since you started, you've done 719? Yes, that we've paid fines so for up to um, yesterday. What inspired this, this, this type of action from Food for the Poor, Ms. Ramsey? What made you say, look, we are going to do this for these people and for their families? Well, the thing is, you know, um, everybody needs a second chance, right? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's the least that we can do to help somebody for Christmas because if these people had money, they would not be locked up in prison. And this is money that is sent to us from donors away, especially to let out prisoners. We do it at Christmas and we do it at Easter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you give me some of the reasons these folks are in jail? Well, it's very minor. The most of them, you won't like to hear this, but it's for traffic fines. I mean, one of the guys that we let out didn't wear his badge, didn't have on his uniform, and he had these tickets, and he, he couldn't afford it. The point is, if he had paid the money, his children would have suffered. So he said, I'll, take, I'll do the, fa the time, and, I'll, and I'm going to pay the fine. I'll just stay in prison because I need the money. So we went. And on the recommendation of the superintendent of the prisons, because we don't choose the people, they are sent to us from the prisons, we let this gentleman out. And he had his money now to go and help his children for Christmas. Yeah. Double bar question. Do you know how much money um, it has cost over these many years? And what happens after that? So you let me out and you forget about me after that? No. I, I no. forget about you? What <laughs> no. happens no. after that? No. Well, actually, when we let you, when we let them out, we give them bus fare. On, on it, we put a, I put my tag on it so that after Christmas, no, they call us. We find out what is their problem, why did they go, what is their situation, and we help them most of the time to start a little business so that they will have a little life and they'll have money so that they don't need to go back to prison again. And we follow it up over the year. During the year, we keep calling them and finding out, are they okay, do they need a little more help, or what is happening? Mm -hmm. Actually, we do this for all prisoners who leave prison mm -hmm. who come to us. How do you decide who to help? Pardon? How do you decide who to help? It's, that's either for you or, or Ms. Silver. Okay, the commissioners within the um, state, they, they recommend they to us. Right, so we don't select the prisoners. The superintendents who are in charge of the prisons actually select based on good behavior or just based on the need that is actually there. Because you will have, for example, yesterday we released a fisherman who he was locked up because he didn't have a fishing license. Now, he was pretty much just fending to feed his family. Now, the superintendent in charge would have said he's on good behavior. He didn't have much. His fan was about 40,000 Jamaican dollars. He's almost 50 years old. He wants to go home for the Christmas to be with his family. Do you help him to get the license? We will. We will because we, too, have a fishing program at Food for the Poor where we have over 14 fishing villages across the island. So we will look into helping him in that regard. Men and women? Men and women. Um, what's the ratio? Uh, not what, quite. Most? Mo mostly men. I would say mostly men. Yeah. Mostly men. Um, Ms. Ramsey, men and women, uh, I've already got the answer, but what, what's the ratio? Um, Miss Men. We do, there's very few women. Yeah. What happens is most of the women are in prison for drug charges, and we don't pay for cocaine charges. Mm. 
Okay. Our donors won't um, give us money for cocaine. Okay. Um, you are in charge of the prison ministry, Miss Miss Ramsey. What does that do? How does the prison ministry work? Well, it's the, we help the prisoners, giving them equipment to train prisoners. We give them food, the prisoners' food. We paint the prisons. We make sure that the prisons are comfortable for these guys that are, and ladies that are in there. And when they're leaving prison, they come with us with a recommendation from the superintendent. And we interview them and see how best we can help them to start their life over so that they don't go back to prison. Because yeah. you have to remember once they come out, they can't get a job. Once they write up a resume and say, I was in St. Catherine on Tower Street, that's the end of them. So that's hmm. where we come in and we make sure that they have a little business and they can look after their family and get their life going again. And we do this for any prisoner that comes to us with a recommendation from the superintendent, from ever, whatever institution they're coming from. Yeah. I should have said congratulations, uh, Ms. Ramsey. Um, you were recognized for 24 years of service. Yes, sir. <laughs> this year coming 25. So why don't you just wait till you reach 25? <laughs> are, you going, are you going to get something else for your 25th? Well, hopefully. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said something just now. Um, how do we change that? And we, we've, we've had this discussion on Smile before, that, yeah, you go to jail maybe for something minor, but when you come out, you can't get a job. And mm -hmm. you just said, um, in your words, they are mm -hmm. done. Um, how, how do you change that? Can it be changed? Yeah, I don't know. You know, Jamaican people, excuse me, I mean, I'm a Jamaican and all of that, but you know how they feel now because of the crime? Lock them up and throw away the key. Yeah. That's, that's the feeling right now. That's where we come in and we're trying to explain to everybody, we all have done something wrong in our life. Let us give each other a chance and maybe things will be better. About forgiveness. Because the same person that you lock up today may be your neighbor tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Food for the Poor is an interesting name, Kivet. And I'm listening to, to what it is that you're doing. And people sometimes don't want to put a correlation between poverty and crime. But what, what I'm hearing is these people basically are incarcerated because they can't afford it. Because they can't afford it. Yeah. They, they literally can't afford it. So the sacrifices that they make for their family, they may go as far as selling a CD on the road and the police will lock him up because he's not supposed to be selling CDs mm -hmm. because they're pirated. Now, when you think about that father who has two kids at home to feed, he doesn't know what else to do. He can't find another job. So hence, he goes out, he sells CDs to make a living. When mm -hmm. he gets locked up, there's nobody there to help his family. Poor people will do things to feed their family. And hence why Food for the Poor is here to assist as best as possible as it relates to alleviating poverty as through our donors. Mm -hmm. We have to give God thanks every day for every donor that donates to Food for the Poor because without them, we would not be where we are today. All right. Thanks a lot for coming. All Thank the very you. Best. Thank you for having us. Uh, Ms. Ramsey, congrats again. And I, I pray that you'll be around for another 25 years. Yes, and happy Christmas to everybody. And to you and your family. Tell Kim a happy Christmas too for me, please. <laughs> She's Thanks, a Andrew. great boss. She's a great boss. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, uh, bye. Kivet Silvera, Director of Food for the Poor. Uh, you just heard from Sandra Ramsey, Prison, Prison Ministry Administrator of uh, Food for the Poor. Is being single at Christmas time a good or a bad thing? No. Nevla and I don't know, but we're going to discuss it. <laughs> and he said, she said, we when we come back. We together, we don't single. <laughs> Marvin, I'm going to tell